Uh, I just want to make uh, clear, Wendy, that these I'm happy to answer questions that are in my mind clear enough to answer, but uh, it should be made clear that these question, these answers to these questions are for information basis only, and if people are intending to take any legal action, that they should consult a lawyer. Uh, so that's clear because uh, things uh, change with the facts. And so if there's any facts in the questions that I'm not made aware of, I, you know, uh, proper legal advice can't be given. So th these are basic informational uh, questions and basic informational answers based on the question. Thank you for joining us today, Rocco. Uh, thanks for having me again, Wendy. So the question today comes from Annette. It seems that these vaccine and testing requirements are also extending to contractors providing services to certain businesses. Is there any additional information you can provide in the context of a contractor and customer relationship? Sure, okay, that's simple contract. And I address this, I address this, you know, people should go to our, our website, constitutionalrightscenter.ca. And I did an eight and a half minute video on your employment rights in refusing vaccines. Now the, the government is not, respecting the law, that's a different issue, we're tackling that in court. But in the context, in the context of a contractor uh, uh, relationship, it's governed by the, the contract. If you are under an existing contract, which will not obviously have a vaccination clause in it, to try to impose, to try to impose a vaccine requirement on a pre-existing contract is illegal. And if they don't let you in, they owe you for the term of the contract and you should get a lawyer to sue to be paid out for the term of the contract. If they try to impose the vaccine, the vaccine uh, term on a new contract, well, that's a different scenario because you don't have a contract yet. That's, uh, those waters are a bit murkier, more murky. Uh, are, are, yeah, are, are, those, those waters are murkier because they can ask for, and you say, no thanks, and then you don't have a contract. Now, can you force the other party uh, to sign the contract without the vaccine clause? Uh, that's, that, that, that's debatable. Right. You can't force them. However, if your contract has a term and there's a renewal clause saying the contract can be renewed, for another five years or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. The law says that they have to negotiate that on good faith. And I would argue that trying to impose medical treatment on somebody who doesn't want it is not bargaining in good faith. Then there, there you would have a remedy, okay? So that's- so, so, that's so if you want me to summarize, if you have a contract, they can't impose it. And I in my opinion is that you, they'd have to pay you for the term. If you have a contract with a renewal clause, they have to bargain in good faith. And trying to impose medical treatment on you that you don't want is not in good faith because it, it would be otherwise unconstitutional and it's against public policy. It's a, an unconscionable term. But if you're negotiating a new contract out of, uh, uh, out of thin air, then it's questionable whether or not you can force them to sign without the vaccine clause. And I hear that a lot of new contracts going forward are not, or, or in new hires going forward the vaccine, con the vaccine clause is in the contracts. So right. it, it would be behoove people to read those very carefully right. in order to understand what you're agreeing Right, with. right. So I'm not saying it's not challengeable. It, it becomes a weaker argument to, as you go along the, the, uh, the spectrum. Okay. okay, thank yeah. you. We are Canadians. We are free, it's meant to be. From sea to shine and sea. Stand tall, stand fast, stand true. We are Canadians.